Hello, and welcome to Lucky Charms Explained. On today's episode, wishbones. To humans, a lucky charm, but to turkeys, an indispensable piece of the anatomy. You might guess that wishbones are an American tradition, often cherished at Thanksgiving time. And this is true, but wishbones also have an ancient history. To start, wishbone is just a nickname. It's actually called the furcula, which means little fork in Latin. A good name since it's a fork-shaped bone, the bird equivalent of the collarbone. Due to its elasticity, the furcula acts as a spring, allowing avian creatures to conserve energy as they flap their wings, enabling flight. Unfortunately for the birds, this same elasticity makes snapping it an entertaining spectacle for humans. Long before the start of this practice, though, humans became fascinated with the furcula, an obsession which goes all the way back to the Etruscans, an ancient northern Italian civilization which predated even the Romans. The Etruscans had several unique cultural beliefs, one of which was augury, or the idea that observing the behavior of birds could allow humans to predict the future. If by bird behavior you are imagining watching birds fly or perch on tree branches, the Etruscans did that too, but they also observed the flying animals in a much more participatory way, killing them and splaying out their internal organs so as to read signs from them, a pursuit otherwise known as heruspicy. The Etruscans would set aside the furcula in the sun to dry, but instead of breaking it, they would regard it as a powerful mystical object and periodically return to it, stroking it while making wishes for the future. This is how the furcula first became associated with wishes, leading to the now colloquial term wishbone. When Rome conquered and assimilated the Etruscans, the wishbone followed. Legend has it the ever-industrious Romans realized there were more hoping to stroke the furcula than available furculas, so they started snapping the bone in two in order to provide more of them, which seemingly did not diminish its cosmic power. After the fall of Rome, these ideas persisted in later European empires, one of which being the British, who would often eat geese for St. Martin's Day, making sure to carefully set aside the wishbone for later use in predicting the weather. The British brought the tradition to the American colonies, and as modern American Thanksgiving came into shape, turkeys ascended to holiday bird of choice. The wishbone cracking game started at some point along the way, though it's hard to say exactly when. The main way of using the wishbone is of course breaking it. How exactly to do this though carries some complexity. The first challenge is finding it. Though most wait until after the bird comes out of the oven, locating it ahead of time may make life easier and prevent the burns which might result from fumbling around inside a searing dish. The most common mistake that comes along with the wishbone is trying to break it immediately, as soon as it has been lifted from the cooked bird on Thanksgiving Day. However, the wishbone should be kept aside for a while to dry so that it becomes brittle and ideal for snapping. It might take a week for the bone to fully dry out, but few wait that long. Many prefer to return to it a bit later that same afternoon and participate in the wishbone breaking game which requires two. Each participant grasps one side of the wishbone, and after a brief count, each pulls in the opposite direction, snapping the wishbone into a couple of pieces. Since wishbones rarely break down the middle, the person who comes away with the larger piece claims victory. Like any competitive affair, people over the years have found ways to game the system to increase their chances of winning and engineers have even proven them out via experiment. One strategy is to choose the thicker side, which will have more cross-sectional area, and therefore diffuse the forces placed upon it at pull time, making it less likely to break. The second is to grasp the wishbone higher up, closer to the center, subtly using your own hand muscles to provide reinforcement to the bone. Lastly, the best action may be inaction, by simply holding still and allowing your opponent to pull, tension builds up in their half first, making it more likely to break. 
The wishbone represents good luck, potentiality, and new beginnings. All of these associations stretch back to the Etruscans, who believed birds had the power to predict or even control the future. Due to the bone's vital role in flapping the wings, it became linked to flight, movement away from wherever you are, to somewhere brand new. When it comes to the wishbone breaking game, winning often means earning some sort of good luck, or the potential to have a wish granted. Since how exactly the wishbone will crack is unpredictable, it signifies the optimism that often comes along with uncertain possibilities. A secondary symbolic meaning of the bone comes from the British, who during the 1800s used to play a version of the wishbone game, in which victory meant the winner would soon be married. As such, the wishbone began to signify love, and writers used it euphemistically to refer to lewd acts. The wishbone in this case may have represented virginity, due to its resemblance to the female genitalia. Because of its association with roasting birds and enjoying magnificent feasts at holiday time, the wishbone also stands for family togetherness and celebration. Though wishbones may no longer be regarded as the spiritually potent objects they were in ancient times, snapping them remains a treasured tradition at many a Thanksgiving table, an evocative image for all seeking a lucky break. And that's all. Hope you enjoyed this video taking a closer look at Wishbones. If you did, please like and subscribe for more episodes of Lucky Charms Explained. And in the comment section, let me know which specific symbols you want to see spotlighted next.